Do you have an RPI that doesn't want to seem to turn on? Do you have an RPI that doesn't want to seem to talk on the network? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to use something called a test point to take a look at that. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about using a test point on the back of the Raspberry Pi to see what's happening. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button. Thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to be covering in this video to talk about what is a test point. Trust me, this is something I thought was only used in manufacturing. Then we're going to look at some power supply test points so you can see if that wall wart or however you're powering your Raspberry Pi is actually getting power into it. And then we're going to show a couple of test points that you can look at the network jack so you can see, especially if the RJ45 is not showing you any sort of link status or network activity, you can at least see what the Raspberry Pi thinks is going on. Again, these are just very cursory looks at things, but it's yet one more troubleshooting tool. This is just one more tool that can be something you can be able to use. Well, the first question is probably just burning on your mind to ask, well, Ron, what is a test point? This is something that I had been aware of that was used mainly in manufacturing situations. I've toured a couple of plants in the past few years and you would see the circuit board come down the line and it would be placed onto a, a test rig and it would have like a bunch of needles sticking on it, and they would touch pre-designated points on the back of the circuit board and it was able to test for basic functionality just to make sure that you know there you minimize some of the possible either bad solder joints or bad connections or sometimes it happens bad components there are a few test points that you can use on a raspberry pi that's what we're going to get into next. Well, what got me looking at this is one time I had what ended up being a bad power supply, but I couldn't really check that out because I didn't have the right pieces, parts to connect into the connector to be able to pull the right pins. And let's face it, some of those pins are rather narrow. So if whether you've got a Raspberry Pi 3B or even earlier, you're going to have a different connector than the USB-C is for a Raspberry Pi 4. But there's a way this all gets put on a level playing field. So if you notice here on the back, there's all sorts of little solder joints. And if you can just, you can barely see it here, there's some fine print here, like a TP and a number. Well, those are called test points. And if you get the schematics for the Raspberry Pi, you can see there's quite a few of them out there. Just for the purposes of today, we're going to look at just two different sets because you can see I've got my handy voltmeter right to right beside it and we can take a look at it now there's going to be some minor variations this is a raspberry pi 4 so with three b's they had an onboard fuse and there's a separate test point that you can look at in that case to go downstream of the fuse so you can see if the fuse is blown the raspberry pi 4s don't seem to have that i didn't see any indication on the schematic but we'll go from there the trick is when you're testing a power supply just Putting your probe leads onto it really won't tell you much if you don't have some sort of load hooked into the power supply because a power supply can act like it's going to be fine, but as soon as you connect a load to it or something that it's going to be powering, then it can call flat on its tuchus, then you're finding out you've got a problem. So what we're going to do is shift over and go through those test points, and then we'll take it one step at a time from there. Now, you've got to have something to for the negative or, or ground, so I'm just going to use the SD card shield. Now, the, what we'll do is look at TP1 or TP2, and TP1 is right here, and let me get the probe out of the way here so you can see it. So it's running just a little over 5 volts, which is fine. And you want to hold it there for a little while because you may find that it varies a little bit. And some of this is, I don't, my hand's not real steady on this. But see, at this point, it's pretty much locked down to uh, to 2.5, to, I mean to 5.22. So that's a good indication there. Now, there's another test point way over here on the other side called TP2. 
and this is where you start testing that the power is getting over to the other side. Now you see it's 5.2 there, so that's good. So that says we've got power not only coming from the USB-C power supply that's plugged in here, but it's making it to the other side of the board. So that's a good indication. Now I've unplugged the network cable because I want to show you what the voltage should look like if it doesn't see a connection to the network. So again, we're going to use the shield on the micro SD card reader, and then we will go to TP26, which is going to be the activity connection. And even sometimes when you're close to this, it can be a little bit of a challenge. Oh, there we go. I wasn't looking up far enough. Okay, so there's TP26. Now see, at this point, it's coming up 3.3 volts. That's what you should expect to see if there's nothing connected. Now, we'll next look at the link light, I'm sorry, the, the speed connection, and that's going to be at TP27. And see, that's showing 3.3 volts. So that says that the power is making it over there. Everything looks fine. Now, we'll plug in the network cable, and let's get everything back here where you can see what's going on. Now, we'll go back to the activity jack. Okay, so we'll go here to TP26. And you can see with the link light, oh, let's hit the range button. With the link light, we're looking 1.3, 1.6. It's going to jump a little bit. Of course, I have i don't really have a good hold on it here, but so you can at least see the voltage has dropped. Now we can go over to the speed connection, which is TP27. And these are information I got right off the, the schematics. So we'll go to TP27 and see now it's holding pretty much stable it's right about 1.4 it's going to be 1.3 1.4 now what i failed to take into account when i'm back over on tp uh 26 now is you're gonna see a little bit of fluxing there because the light's blinking and the voltmeter is only going to be able to catch so much of that so that's why there was a little bit of variation there and that's why it was good to check it before you really did anything so it's going to be jumping back and forth that one's going to be a little bit harder to get a stable reading on but this at least shows you that whether or not it's seeing the network in the case of the network jack connections and to me more importantly is are you getting the proper voltage out of the power supply into the raspberry pi or however you're powering it because you need to have as close to five volts you can a little under maybe but a little over you know not necessarily a bad thing but if you're not able to deliver that, then having the correct amperage level or milliamps in this case, I'm sorry, no, it would be amperage because you're supposed to have at least two and a half amps. Having low voltage is not really going to be a good thing to do. So this gives you an idea of what to look at. Just a couple of things to test with the Raspberry Pi, but at least it gives you some more tools in your bag of tricks to be able to have some idea when things maybe are not as they should be. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.